Hello, UAE Grow Your Finances Community. Where we discuss how to make your money work for you as opposed to the other way around and how best to grow your finances within the UAE. Here, we like to flip challenges around and create ideas, opportunities and possibilities so we can all succeed together because there are enough seats for everyone at this table. How are you today, Russ? I am absolutely amazing Eid Mubarak to all those that are celebrating Eid Mubarak yes we have a juicy juicy episode today and it's all about property my favorite topic when it comes to investments I love all things property but today we are going to be discussing the process of purchasing our family home here in the UAE And we are going to be going through absolutely everything as well as throwing in some really juicy treats and surprises for you guys because we are going to be going on video and showing you the home, showing you what we do with it, showing you the ins and outs, showing you the problems, showing you the snagging, the fixing things, the decorating which is my favorite part. We're going to be literally designing and setting up our podcast studio, which will eventually go on video in our new home. That is, for me, the most exciting part. We're going to have our own little podcast, little studio in our house. Yes, it's not going to be a closed room and we're not going to take one of the bedrooms and convert it into a podcast studio, but it's going to be our own podcast space. And that is super exciting because we've just released our 14th episode We are having a lot of fun. I think this is by far the best type of hobby that I've ever jumped into with you. I thoroughly enjoy it. Like I absolutely love it. And speaking about starting small in our little two-bedroom townhouse, putting a podcast studio in there, I think by documenting it and sharing it with everyone, it's going to be so fun to watch how we grow from there how we started off as well as inspiring for people who think, oh, I can't do it yet. I don't have an appropriate space to do it. I don't, you know, there's never a perfect situation. You just start from where you are and you make the most of what you have and you grow from there. And speaking about growing from there, we are looking for an editor to join our team and to grow with us. So we want to put out as many episodes as we can, as well as focus on getting in the best guests possible and as many guests as possible to give you guys as much knowledge and information and inspiration as possible. So if you are an editor out there who can do video edits, podcast edits, please do reach out to us on uaegyf at gmail.com. If you're a sponsor, same email, uaegyf at gmail.com. You're going to want to jump on board because we are furnishing our house from scratch. I'm talking about everything. Crockery, cutlery, small appliances, everything. Everything. It makes my heart beat because we will be obviously trying to sell as much as we can. However, we will be buying everything brand new. It's going to hurt the bank account, but I think it's going to increase the happiness level of our whole family and that is right now the most important thing to us yeah because it's our first family home so it's the first home that we're going to be creating precious memories with our little prince and we want to make sure that those memories are just filled with the most joy possible so it's like starting afresh everything to our taste And we'll talk more about it after the discussion topic. But before we get onto that, I have a question that I asked Kimberly, I think five minutes before we jumped on the mic. And it was a juicy question. She didn't really give me enough of an answer yet. So I've decided to put it on the podcast. So Kimberly, tell me, who do you relate to the most? Who do you think you are the most like in terms of the celebrities in the world? Megan Fox. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's just a joke for all the people who watch Love is Blind. But just putting it out there, I really do think that Chelsea does resemble Megan Fox. So give her a break. It's not Megan Fox for me. I feel like I used to relate to people when I used to watch celebrities. I don't know where. Listen to watch celebrities. I feel like I used to deeply relate. But I don't know. Things have changed. I think maybe since I became a mom, I'm not sure. Maybe since I got ill, my priorities changed. I'm not sure. Nothing comes to mind. I can't think of anyone that I really relate to. I will say that I would never actually want to be a celebrity. And that's no judgment or anything on people who are celebrities because there are certain personality types that thrive in that situation. But I certainly wouldn't want to be scrutinized and judged for every single little thing I do and say. People commenting on my appearance, people commenting how I bounce back after having a baby, people commenting on literally everything, my relationship, the things I do, the things I say, watching me everywhere I go my goodness it's just too much for my nervous system so I wouldn't want to be a celebrity so I don't relate to people in that position but if I have to name somebody I'm gonna come up with an absolute shocker and say Meghan Markle do you have any idea why I would say Meghan Markle because she does not give a about any anyone around her and she is herself and she would not apologize for being herself. And she's a really strong-minded woman. Strong, strong, strong woman. Those are good points. But it's actually because I feel personally, and I know that it's a very unpopular opinion and most people will probably disagree with me. But if you really stop and just block out all the noise and you're just still and you think about it and you look at her interviews from the past... She is intensely misjudged and unfairly judged and blamed for things that she's actually not responsible for. And I admire her intelligence and I admire her compassion. If you look at when she was a very little girl, she used to actually write to companies who put out commercials that she felt didn't send out a very good message, especially for children. And she used to already make a change at that very young age. And that's ingrained within her. She, she actually does want to do good within the world. And I feel that her marrying into a royal family gave her a platform to do that. And I no, I don't want to step out of line. But all families have some level of toxicity. We can all relate to that. You know, there's at least some family members with emotional damage. I mean, we all have some emotional damage, but the dynamic between families is often very toxic. But if you add a lot of power and ego and status to that, it's obviously intensified. Absolutely. So she's married into a family that she, I don't think, knew much about in terms of like, we even don't know much about what goes on within the royal family, you know, the British royal family. And this is, I say this with all due respect, any family in that position, there would be a, a strange dynamic, an interesting dynamic and a toxic dynamic at some level. Okay, so she married into this family and I feel that she is somebody who is very perceptive, she's very intelligent, she saw things within that family that she felt were really damaging towards her husband. Her husband was already aware of those things and it, he saw it was time now to step away from the toxicity, to cut it out of his life, especially becoming a father because he wanted to change patterns, change generational patterns, heal generational traumas. And so he delved very deep into therapy and he started to change those patterns and shift and it shed light on things for him. So I feel that she helped him into a transformation and people turned around and blamed her for that. See, she just gave him another way of life and he chose that way of life. He made his own choice. He's a man. He has his own mind, his own heart his own choices he's a strong character within himself they're both strong characters and I do believe that they love each other very deeply they're both intelligent they're both very well educated very intelligent and I feel that she has been blamed and mocked and misjudged and sure maybe there are some things that she has done that aren't great 
but honestly speaking, who hasn't made choices, especially within a very difficult and complex situation? I must say that she walked away from a very thriving career as well. It wasn't just like she was this nobody that came into the royal family and did it, you know, for the money or for the fame. Or No, she walked away from a very thriving career. I mean, I watched her in Suits. She's a very good actress. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that she walked away from that to come into an environment that she obviously did not fit into. And she did this all for her husband. Yeah, exactly. And she had her own money. She had her own life. She had her own choices, her own freedom. She did not have to come into a situation where there are so many rules and she has to abide by them. And sure, you know that if you marry into a royal family, you have to uphold a certain reputation. You know, they're there to serve the public. They are living a life of service to others. They truly are. But I feel that she wants to do it her own way. And honestly speaking, Princess Diana was a similar character where she wanted to do things her own way. She wanted to lead by empathy, by the heart. She wanted to lead by her own heart, not by what anybody else was telling her to do, not by following a step by step. And she was loved for it. So I'm not sure what went wrong there. People say that she's greedy, that she's taking advantage, that she changed Harry, that she's manipulative, that she's a narcissist. We have absolutely no evidence whatsoever of this. We can't judge, nor can we say what happened because it's so secretive, you know, and there's just not enough accurate information out there. If you want to go uh, to the media, you can find a million different stories, but it's not in our place to judge. But you know, sitting back and watching some of the media on the situation, it honestly just looks like a person coming into a family where the family didn't think she belonged and she loved someone deeply in the family and that's what created the divide. And at the end of the day, they divided together from the family and they are still together. So it wasn't just a one-time thing she came in there to ruin the family. No, she came in there. They wanted to have a relationship the way they wanted to have it. And it obviously did not work out. Honestly, what I think happened is that Harry found somebody that he could confide in finally, that he trusted, that he felt he could relate to very deeply. And maybe even perhaps they had similar struggles within their families. And I feel that that just brought out the truth of the matter. It's not like she sat there speaking words into his head that he started to believe. No, because he knows his family more than anybody. And he, I'm sure he loves his family very much, as everybody does. We love our families. But it just revealed some truths. And he knew that he had to find himself, make a change. And for that, I salute her because she actually helped him to heal. And that's a beautiful thing. That's what our partners are supposed to do, help us heal, evolve, and free ourselves. Absolutely. So Meghan Markle. Meghan Markle. <laughs> what a change of events, you know, because I actually said to Kim before the podcast started, you remind me of, you know, that ex-Prime Minister of New Zealand. <laughs> I honestly was shocked to hear. Why is that? I think it's because of how strong she was during the pandemic. She was like not having anything. Anyone that was trying to control the country the way she didn't want it to be controlled, she put a stand to it. Very strong-headed. She was probably very, very good for New Zealand during the time. She's brunette. <laughs> and she just reminds me of you for some reason, some odd reason. I know we watched a few of her speeches during the pandemic time. I think we watched her more than we watched any other. She press was press. unconventional. She didn't like stand there all formal, dressed formally, addre yeah. like putting on an act. She was just like in her bed, literally just addressing people yeah. like they were her acquaintances, which is cool. I like that. I think what was funny is we, we didn't watch literally any other country address their country. Our we didn't president. watch any other the president addressed their country. I mean, we watched the South African president maybe once or twice. I think for five minutes and then we switched it off because it was... <laughs> yeah, and it just 
anyway, we don't live in South Africa, so it didn't make Oh, we sense. did watch Donald Trump because it was hilarious. Yeah. We watched him for a comedy show. That yeah. was really fun, actually. Yeah, I, I know we make in a light of a situation that is not a happy situation at all. No. However, that is a person that you reminded me of. And on to well, thank you. my person that I would, I think, like to be reminded of. Yeah. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I know why you say that, because you love his character in The Great Gatsby. My God, The Great Gatsby is probably one of my best movies. It is my best movie out there. And he is incredible in the movie. Titanic, amazing. And most importantly, this is the most important reason why I said him, is Wolf of Wall Street. If you guys have not seen it, please go check it out. If you're an investor, if you love investing money and uh, you like the stock market and you like risky investments, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Wolf of Wall Street is one not to miss. Don't go watch it with your parents though because I went to the cinema with my mother and watched it and it was very awkward. Yeah, it's That's... a bit inappropriate for... However, when it was finished, we did turn to each other and say it was a brilliant movie. But I think you're forgetting something. Wasn't he a major drug addict? Yes, but still, he was a ma his character was incredible during this movie. You mean like his charisma yes. and his and the way he like traded the stocks and the way he got people excited uh, in, in to, to trade in the stocks? Because personally, this is my passion. I like to get people excited on investment. Was he I not a financial advisor? He was a financial advisor, but he was a different type of financial advisor. And it was a movie, you know. It wasn't something where he was playing with people's money in a risky way. I enjoyed watching how risky he was buying these small stocks, selling them, making bucket loads of money. Not the part yeah. when he used to take drugs and stuff like that, but... Uh, but it's still interesting. It's just part of, part of the movie. I mean, at the end of the day, I've spoken to a few people that have worked on Wall Street back in the day. And honestly speaking, I don't know if I can put this in here, but it was like this. Yeah. Drugs everywhere. Yeah, uh, fill in the blank. Yes. So... <laughs> So it, it actually portrayed the stock market back in the day. When new money started flowing in from the stock market, that is when things started going crazy. So to be clear, you wouldn't really want to mess with people like that. However, it's super interesting to watch. And you love watching how he was just such a go-getter and made things happen for himself. It was just a really, really entertaining movie. Yes, it was. It was I, brilliant. I was on the edge of my seat throughout the movie, and that's what made it a good movie. But definitely, if I want to talk about being a part that he plays, Great Gatsby all the way. He is one of the most exceptional actors. I think the only thing I remember at school is when we went to the Great Gatsby book and we, all the underlining messages. It's the only thing I remember from school. You have a trauma about that, don't you? Do you want to tell us about it? So I think that that green light that flashes... They asked you that question. What is the green light symbolized that flashed across the water at Daisy's house? This yes. Is, yeah. And what I said is it was jealousy. So the color green symbolizes jealousy. Yeah. And I said it was jealousy. It was jealousy because Great Gatsby was not married to Daisy. Perfect sense. I think it's the correct, it's one of the correct answers. And he aspired to be the husband of Daisy. He didn't like the husband of Daisy. We don't remember his name. He didn't make that much of an impact. <laughs> because he was jealous of him in every sense of the word. And he didn't mind being anyone as long as he could be with Daisy. And that light flashing at the end of the dock reminded him of the jealousy he has to Daisy. And I didn't get one mark for this. That's totally unjust. And I think that they need to give you that mark. What was the reason again? I can't even remember what the reason was. That you they... tell me what your teachers said was the reason. It was something else, you know. Money, perhaps? Money or something like this. Let me just Google what Google says, what it symbolizes. What does the green light across the water in the great I think it was money and Gatsby symbolize 
It says it symbolizes Gatsby's love for Daisy, money, and the American dream. So for me, that is utter fill in the blanks. Because at the end of the day, I'm a creative as, at heart, and I like to think outside the box. And if a school is going to make us think inside the box, then what's the point of a school? I don't know what they expected you to say. It's a very unclear question, and it can be open to interpretation. So but I you can't really give somebody a no for I that. I thought that's what English was all about, the interpretation, how we see yeah. things. If we can make sense of something, I thought that that is the way that we would be marked. But clearly, they go from answers they get from some governmental website, yeah. and they say, uh, cross Oh, was it in your, your examination, like your government examination? I have no clue. I, I oh, can't remember. But and the government doesn't control it. It's your school. It, no, it could be. It could. It was probably the government uh, examination. Interesting. But anyway, on to the greener things. I really hope you're able to heal from this trauma. <laughs> <laughs> However, people have told you that you remind them of Leonardo DiCaprio. I really hope... We don't turn this into a Chelsea situation from Love is Blind, Chelsea Megan Fox situation. But true story, people have told him on a regular basis, actually multiple people have told you that you remind them of Leonardo DiCaprio and I've been there and heard it. But I'm going to do what Chelsea didn't do. And I'm going to say it's not true. There she might, did say there, she doesn't there might, there might be one or two. No, she didn't say only She said three. she thinks it's her blue eyes and brown hair only. That's what she said. But she didn't say it during the process. Yeah, she said that straight away, immediately. She did say that. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to say that, guys, it's not true. Maybe you, there will be one or two parts of my body that remind people of Leonardo DiCaprio. But I don't see it. It's more in your attitude, I think. Maybe it's my attitude. But I honestly think he is... A role model from far. Who knows? You know, who knows what type of person he really is. I can tell you which celebrity I would like to relate to the most, and my goal to evolve to become most like in their characteristics that they portray to the public. Marissa Pierre. Ooh, that's a very good guess, but no. <laughs> <laughs> Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. Why is that? He's a visionary. He's somebody who realizes that there is no limit to what you can dream. And not only that, he's somebody who sees it as absolutely no problem making those dreams a reality. He's one of the greatest visionaries of our time. He envisions what he wants for his people to make their lives better, to give them opportunities that eventually also results in opportunities for the rest of the world, just like ourselves. And he actually takes the steps to make it happen. And he doesn't wait. He doesn't delay. He just goes for it. As well as he genuinely listens to the needs of the people and caters to that. I feel that it's not just Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. Obviously, it's MBZ as well, the president of the country. But we're living in Dubai, so we're seeing his immediate effects at the moment. And we're benefiting from it too. But they are truly and genuinely great leaders with the perfect characteristics for leadership. They don't get too emotionally involved. They remain completely level-headed when making decisions. And their best interest, first and foremost, is the safety and security of their citizens and residents and their country and their economy and the stability that is their, their priority first and foremost. And all of their decisions are based on that. And then secondly, they focus on abundance for all as much as possible. And they take the steps to actually make that happen. And I truly feel that that's what we need for all leaders. And then on top of that, they believe in tolerance for people who are different, people with different beliefs, all cultures. So tolerance and acceptance, peace and love and humility and what a breath of fresh air to step into a country that leads by those values you can feel it in the air when you're here i think that's the reason why we've stayed so long we've been here for 10 years in the uae and the leaders are just 
unbelievable. We always joke about our leaders, you know, wherever we are in the world. My president is doing this. Our president is doing that. Our prime minister is doing this. What a joke. What a joke. You know, in the UAE. It's just gratitude. There are no it, jokes. There is no joke. There is no joke. There's and, nothing to joke and about. And it doesn't matter who you're speaking to. It could be someone who's having the worst time in the world in the UAE and someone that's having the best time in the world in the UAE. And they will all have the same thing. The leaders are great. You can't complain. Yeah. I'll just give one example. You have, let's say, a delivery driver that's on the bike all day in the boiling heat. He stops off and he removes something from the road that could cause an accident for someone else because of his heart, because he's a great person. If someone videos this and sends it onto the media, the next day the leader will do something for that person. Yeah. This is how great they are. They want the greatness of people to shine through as well. Yes. That's what a leader is. Exactly. And they want their country to be the spectacle. They want to have the biggest, tallest building in the world. They want to have the tallest, this, the biggest, this. Because at the but end of the most importantly, the best education systems, the best health care, you know, they're really striving for the foundations to be the best of the best. Correct. So, I mean, if you guys are looking for a great place to live, this is not an advert from the government. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting we paid wish. the government. That would be very exciting. However, we are putting it out there that we've been here for 10 years and we probably will be here for another 10 years. Inshallah. Inshallah. Guys, sorry about our Arabic. We try. We do try. It's not easy as a South African accent. I oh. wish I could sit here and say that that is my celebrity, the one that I relate to the most. However, I cannot. I am not a great leader of the UAE unfortunately. But Although you are a great leader of the UAE Grow Your Finances. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> I actually had a discussion topic planned for today, but Ross took the lead and it's been a really juicy one. So well done. Woo well done, Ross. We, you need to do more discussion topics for us. Let's do it. On to the juicy episode. Ross, are you ready? To make finance fun? Absolutely. In three, two, one, fun. fun. So, guys, our guest today is super, super exciting, incredible founder, CEO, mother of a beautiful, beautiful baby boy, one of the most inspirational people in my life, one of the most beautiful people in my life, the most incredible person. Welcome, Kimberly Horwitz. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. It's a lovely to be here. And I was posing all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I was like showering myself the whole way through. Like, keep it coming. Keep it coming. Encouraging him. <laughs> I'm really excited to talk about the process of purchasing our property so far. Mostly about the creative side and the fun side of things. Ross will speak about... The boring side. Well, the tedious side, the things that you have to get done, but you have to know that you have to get done so that you are prepared, so that you are equipped with the knowledge, so that you can do better, taking from our experience and learning from our experience. So where do we start? We start by going to a mortgage advisor or a bank that has a mortgage facility. And first of all, which is this is normally not the first step that people start off with. And that's the biggest mistake they make. They go straight to go look at the properties because they think they can get this amount of money from the mortgage advisor, from the bank. And it's always wrong. It, it's a tease. That's it, what I do. And I tease myself by thinking that I can stretch further than what I can. Especially if you're with your wife when you're going to look at properties, you know, because you normally view things that are completely out of your price range. And a lot of the time we think that we earn in more money than we actually are when we take out of our expenses and all the fees. So 
The first thing you need to do is you need to go to an advisor or a bank. We personally used Kevin, as we talk about all over the group. Great guy. Helped us so much. And yeah, we can put you in touch if you wish. He will do a valuation study. And he will tell you how much you can lend from a bank. You will tell him, okay, I'm interested to lend this amount of money from the bank. It should be within the value that he is telling you that the bank will give you because he knows. He's the professional. He does hundreds of cases every single month. So he knows exactly how much the bank will give you. He has all the calculations and everything like that. And also you have to bear in mind the deposit, right? Correct. There's always a deposit, guys. 25 to 30%. You need to have, see, I'm just going to tell you, have 30% just in case. Normally, it's a 20% down payment, but there are a lot of fees that are unexpected through the process. So have 25 to 30% of the total value of the property ready with you in your bank. There are ways around it, but obviously, we're not going to get into that in the in this podcast. And if we, you do want help with that, just reach out to us. Because we, we found ways around because... That's how Ross is. <laughs> As you guys know, I like to have all my money in investments at all times. Obviously, besides my emergency fund, as I speak about all the time. Okay, so once you have found out how much you're able to lend from the bank, then you go look at properties that are in that value. Don't be like me and be tempted to look at properties that are above that value and then offer lower for the property because I'm the type of person who I'm a dreamer and I think mm, maybe I can actually do more. Maybe I can actually find something that's more. Rather use that creativity to find something that suits you that's maybe a little bit outside of what you were thinking. For example, we went on the border of Dubai and Sharjah and that's how we got such a good deal because that area is still being built up and it will eventually be a fantastic area with all the facilities and everything and the community itself is absolutely beautiful but when people hear it's on the border of Sharjah and Dubai they have reservations however when they go there they sold you know so those are the ways around it not trying to stretch yourself be creative in other ways where you can stay within your price range and still be happy. That's my tip at this point. So once they've told you how much you can lend from the bank, that is when you contact a property agent, okay? Or whoever you use to scout out your property to see which ones are the great fits. We personally use Muhammad. I speak about him all over the group. He's helped us immensely with this purchase. He even has been to charge and back a few times just for us to make sure that we didn't have to do that. So he really took the hassle out of the buy-in stage. He's been incredible. He truly has. I'm so glad we found him. This guy, we met him for the first time. He took us for coffee. He, you know, he he wasn't trying to schmooze us. He was literally trying to create friends. He wanted to have a relationship with us. You know, he didn't want to just force us to buy something. Actually, it's not all business for no. him. And also nothing is too much for him. Everything is like, yeah, it's fine. We can do it. And he wasn't pushing us at all. He's he like, wasn't you know, pushing. If you like the property, take it. If you don't like it... I'm sure there's a few other properties out there with some other agents. Have a look. Have a look which one's best for you. He actually told me that he does not like to be pushy because it's such an agenty thing. And he knows that people get so annoyed they do not like it. So he says that he is very hands-off. And if people like something, they'll follow their own heart. He doesn't need to push them. So he did tell me that he is that type of person who just doesn't push people at all. And I love that. And we actually found him through, I think, Property Finder or something on one of the properties of Mossar because that's where we bought. We looked at Mossar, I think, a year ago before they had built anything. And we were like, wow, so beautiful. We would love to buy something here. However, it's Sharjah. But do you know what actually happened? I found a property that was really well priced and I didn't know if the listing was for real. And I contacted the agent and it took me to another agent And that agent was like, you have to come to our offices, you have to, and like he was not being very accommodating. He was pushing. He was pushing like, it's going to go soon, you must come to our offices. And he was making me do all the work, you know. 
and then come to discover that the property wasn't actually exclusively his. It was actually Muhammad's property and he was trying to sell Muhammad's property. And that's why he wasn't being straight to the point. You know, he wasn't just like, okay, like, he has all the information. I'll come and meet you. You know, he wasn't transparent and honest. So it was actually Muhammad's property. So we sought Muhammad out. We like did the investigation work and found Muhammad. So you have so many of these other agents on the surface who behave this way. And he was from a pretty renowned company. He wasn't like from a strange company or anything. But it's hard to find the gem. So now yeah. that we found the gem, we want to share him with you. Let us know if you're looking for an agent. He's absolutely great. He works the Dubai area also. Yes, that's his main area where he works. But he's taken a big interest in Mossar because of how beautiful it is and how much interest there is out there. So we bought into the first phase of Mossar, just to let you know. First tip, if you're looking for a place that is a lot cheaper and bigger than Dubai market, go on the board of Sharjah. Because at the end of the day, the property where we buy in is 20 minutes from Dubai airport. That's how close it is to Dubai. You can throw a rock into Dubai from where we are. So that was really exciting. We obviously got a beautiful property for the price we paid. So much space. So much space God, compared to Dubai. This community has 50,000 trees. This is what it's known for. Cycling ramp. It's all about healthy living, lifestyle. So when you drive into it, you've completely gone into an oasis, which is fantastic. Yeah, and they know high-rise buildings. It's all villas and townhouses. Yeah, so enough of the sales pitch for Massa. Uh, <laughs> guys, once again, they're not paying us. This is not a sponsorship. We obviously all. like it. We bought our house there. So. Exactly, exactly. We've only had one look at it. It's absolutely beautiful. We're going to go there on the 19th to do the snagging, which is great. But on to the next stage. You find and by the way, we'll we'll take footage of that, like video footage and share it with everybody. Correct, because we also are using a company for that to make sure that everything is snagged correctly. On to the next point. So you find the property agent that suits you, not the property agent that suits everyone else around you. You need to find someone that you gel well with, someone that understands your needs and someone that's not going to push you. Three important points, okay? Another tip. Okay, please, you need to make sure you, you're working with the right person because you are going to go out a few times to try find the perfect place with him. Do not settle on the first property you see. Or her. Or her, definitely, or her. Do not settle on the first property you see. You need to go visit a few properties and then you need to weigh out the situation. But you need to buy something that you're in love with. This is going to be probably the biggest asset you've ever bought in your life. So you need to make sure that you are 100% comfortable with spending that type of money on that property. Okay. So once you found the perfect property... I just want to say at this point that the way that I knew that this was the property for us is that I felt I was getting value for money. I felt that the value of the property outweighed what we were paying for the property, which is very rare at the moment in Dubai. Most of the properties that I looked at, I felt that the price was way too high for what you get. For sure. I, I was like, I cannot actually go ahead with this because I feel that it's just not justified. And then when we looked at this property, I was like, wow, I'm getting all that for this price? I don't believe it. Yeah. And that's, I think, is the, the sign. I think that a buy property set us up for Mossar. Because, Probably, yes. Because it, it got us like so upset for the amount of money we were paying for what we were getting. That when we got to something that had real walls. Yeah. No fake walls, guys. Great quality. Great quality. Beautiful design. Beautiful design. Beautiful area. Beautiful community. Good size uh, garden. Good privacy. So everything, it had everything you really wanted in a property, plus the garden, which we are so excited for because in South Africa, you only really buy things with gardens. Yeah. There's not many apartments, it's mainly houses, so, or villas. <laughs> villas, villas. <laughs> so once you've found the right place, you need to tell your mortgage advisor or your mortgage person and they will start the process for approval, okay? So they will... Submit all the documents. They will ask you for everything you need to submit. And then they will submit the documents to the bank. Once you get the approval from the bank, the bank will approve the certain value that you can buy at with what percentage they will be paying at. And then the mortgage advisor, if he's a good mortgage person, he will tell you all of the details. He will tell you all step by step. With the property guy, they will, you put them in touch and they will basically take all the hassle away from you. 
if your property guy and your mortgage guy are not taking all the hassle away from you, you need to find new people because at the end of the day, you are paying them a hefty fee, especially the property guy. So they should be telling you step by step what you should be doing because you're not the professional. They are. That's why you need people that you trust. Once you've done that, you submit your offer. Okay, through your property agent, and then the seller comes back whether they accept it or not. You know, always try and submit a bit of a lower value of the property. However, if the property agent knows the market and knows the property is getting a lot of offers, then probably submit what he's telling you to submit. That's why it's good to go with somebody who's not pushy. It's so important because they'll be honest with you on how much you actually can submit for the property. And very important, you should probably find someone that has exclusive agency rights of that property because then you know who you are bidding up against. However, if a property has three agents working on it, you don't know how much the other agents are getting from other people and you might lose the opportunity. When you find the right opportunity, snatch it, please, because the right property only probably comes every now and again. Next step. Next step, once it's been accepted, you would start the process by signing everything and going through all the processes from the developer. Because, for example, we bought in the first phase. So the first phase, the reason why we bought in the first phase of a off-plan property project is because the first phase was always sold cheaper than the next phase, the next phase, and obviously the last phase. It always gets more expensive as the properties get closer to handover stage. So that's another tip. If you buy in the first phase, you guarantee to make money. For example, we bought this two-bedroom townhouse. Right now, which is three months after we had signed everything, you cannot find the same property for the price we bought it for. You can't even find it for, it's probably 100,000 or more, the lowest value. So this is another tip. Make sure you buy into the first phase. Try get into the first phase. It's very hard because stock is always limited. They only release property by property after the municipality has signed everything off. Because we bought in Sharjah, there's a different process to buying in Dubai. Obviously, the property agent, the mortgage guy, and obviously the developer should be guiding you step by step. If they're not... You need to make sure that they take you seriously and they give you step-by-step -step processes. Next steps, you have to have the down payment ready. The down payment needs to be paid to the seller at the land apartment, as well as the rest of the money needs to be paid to the developer if you buy in like we did, because basically our seller only paid 20% down payment before she sold off the property. Therefore, 80% of the property was owned still by the developer. So the bank had to pay the developer the rest of the percentage. If you are buying a ready property that is not a off-plan project where the seller has paid for the full 100% of the property, obviously the bank will pay the seller the other 80% for you and then you will obviously pay your installments to the bank. So these are different processes for different situations. It gets a bit complicated, guys, and that's why you have to have people, once again, that you trust and people that can guide you through those processes. Because we bought from the developer, per se, and 20% from the seller, we have a different situation than most people when they buy a second-hand property. I don't want to guide you step-by-step step on this podcast because, like I said, the steps change depending to which region you are buying in, whether it's Abu Dhabi, whether it's Dubai, whether it's Sharjah. But I can definitely guide you if you are buying in Sharjah, if you need some assistance, reach out. I've just gone through the process. The process is long. It took us at least two, two and a half months to finish everything off. And thank God we did it just before the Eid holidays. Yes, actually, that's very lucky. So at the end of the day, you need to have your 25% to 30% down payment ready in your bank at all times. You need to have an approval from your mortgage advisor or a bank. And you need to have a property that you really like that falls in the value of what money you have, not money that your wife or sometimes your husband thinks you have. <laughs> so those are the important steps to have. And obviously, like I said, for the fifth time, you need to have people on your side that you trust and not people that are in it only for the commission. So that is a little bit of 
the steps on the way to do it. But uh, obviously, it also involves a land department and it also involves a meeting with the bank and the developer or the bank and the seller to transfer the other 80% of the property. Did you mention the hidden fees? There are hidden fees. There are different hidden fees in Sharjah. There's different hidden fees in Abu Dhabi. There's different hidden fees in Dubai. All I'm saying is have that extra 5% to 10% ready with you for these hidden fees because they change all the time. So if I tell you something that I paid now, maybe in six months it will be different. You know, So I'm not going to go into details there. I'm just going to tell you that there were hidden fees. There was a bank mortgage payment in the land department of 1% of the property price that I had to pay up front that I didn't know about, which I did pay. There's also the mortgage fee that you pay to the bank which I was informed about by my mortgage guy. So it does change as you go. So just be sure that you have that extra 5 to 10% of the property value during the process to close the deal properly without having to lend money from your friends and family. Are you feeling exhausted yet? Because yes, the process is quite exhausting, but we have a pick-me-up for you now at this point. This is where I take over with the fun part. We're going to be showing you guys the process of moving in. Yes, some of the tedious stuff, but also the fun stuff, the decorating, the choosing the furniture, where we're getting value for money, how we're finding the deals. Because as you know, we love a good deal. And we want it to look perfect at the same time. But the process does not need to leave you bankrupt. So we're going to show you how to do it the smart way. And when I say show you, I mean we're actually going to take video footage of the process. So what we have in store for you is the design process. Masa is a woodland community. It's a forest community. And the home styles are contemporary. They're calming, soothing, cool tones in a contemporary style. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bringing in the theme of the woodland and the forest into the home. So using earthy colors and some warm colors to go with the cool. And we're going to create an environment that is super serene and soothing. Gabriel's room is going to be an enchanted forest theme. And he's going to have his little king's castle in his enchanted forest theme as a bed. It's also going to be a Montessori room. So for parents out there who know about all of this, just FYI, this is going to help us get more sleep and more rest so that we are more productive, we have more energy. It's going to be conducive to him doing things for himself, feeling comfortable in his space, feeling in control of his space and feeling like he can be there on his own at times, especially at nighttime, inshallah. Because at the moment he sleeps like right next to me at night time in his crib still. Then we are going to be doing our podcast space. So we're going to be decorating that to the theme of the UAE Grow Your Finances brand. But also we're going to be turning that small space into an office space and maximize on that. So we're going to have, for example, if we can, these are plans, we're going to have a pull out desk that can be tucked away and it can also be functional in that space. So we're going to come up with little clever ideas that perhaps you can use within your smaller space within Dubai. Because let's be real, space is money in this country. You really do pay top dollar for space in this country. We also want to do some decorative pieces. So the walls at the moment are all white which is very nice because it leaves a blank canvas for us. But we want to eventually, and we might do this in a step-by-step -step as we go, but we want to eventually do a lovely TV wall with perhaps even a fireplace. doesn't have to be a real fireplace. It can be one of those very realistic-looking fireplaces because we don't need the warmth, but it's about the ambience that it creates. It's about the energy that it gives. Or we can put the fireplace on the TV. On the TV. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like YouTube yeah. YouTube has like fireplace videos. No, we're not going to be doing that. And then Ross wants to do a coffee station for himself. He wants like a very nice coffee machine that he can go outside and drink his coffee in the morning and live his best try, life. Yeah, live his best life. And then we are going to be growing our own food. 
So we're going to be creating a little vegetable garden with fruits and vegetables and herbs in our garden. And that's going to be quite interesting because of the climate control in this country. So we're really going to try to find tips from people that do grow vegetables in the country. And we're going to use it to the best of our advantage to grow some really cool organic fruits and vegetables. I'm so excited for that. That's going to be my little project for some health and wellness and sunlight and fresh food. And to teach Gabriel yes. how to grow his own food and to be in nature. And I think it's a very valuable lesson. Patience, yeah. watching it grow and being patient. He already loves sticking his hand into the soil. So Yes, he does. He's going to really enjoy that. I think that's a natural human instinct. But definitely we'll keep a space for a barbecue. Ross will be designing his barbecue area eventually when he's <coughs> used to the space and he knows exactly what he wants. I think I'm going to make it as well. So this is, could also be a bit of a project that we can also document. That's cute. Because, yeah. And I also I plan on getting us all bicycles because there's a cycling track in Massad. It's like a very famous cycling track now. Everybody comes there to cycle. So if we all get bicycles, we can work on our fitness as a part of our lifestyle in a fun way. And it can be like a family activity. I think they also have paddle courts and things like that. So maybe you guys can also follow our fitness journey, which I'm laughing because we aren't really like fitness people. But we do truly value health and wellness. So honestly speaking, it's actually a transformation. Moving into this new life is like a transformation for us. We found a place that inspires us to be better and do better. We're excited to give you a house tour. We're excited to show you a before and after. We're excited to share our new inspiring healthy lifestyle for healthy mind, healthy body, healthy mindset, more energy, vitality, productivity, and to just improve in every area so that we move up and up and up and inspire you to do the same along with us. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know if we shared this, but we have been living in a one bedroom for the last one and a half years. It's been tough. I mean, it's a beautiful one bedroom in a beautiful community, but we feel that it's time to grow. It's time to grow with our community. Our community is growing, so we would like to grow into a bigger space, a space where our ideas can grow. In a space where we can feel free enough to jump outside the box. Your space certainly inspires your headspace. And stay tuned, guys, because the next episode is going to be with the one and only COO of Saxo Bank, which we are super excited about. We've been working on this one for the last month. We finally secured a date with them, and the podcast should be out by the beginning of May. They're doing really interesting things in this space. So I'm very excited to see what they have to share with our community and how it can benefit, inform, and empower our community, as well as make our community some good money. Absolutely. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It's going to be a good one. They're going to go over the fees. They're going to go over the way you sign up. They're going to go over a lot of things. They might even give us a bonus. We're working on that for you guys. So stay tuned and we love you all. And make sure that you click that subscribe button. Make sure you follow the channel. Make sure you stick those automatic downloads on because it all helps the channel grow. And the bigger we get, the bigger the guests get. Get involved, hop on board, we're in for a wild ride. And remember, on that note, pay yourself first because you are worth it. Money.